We are in front of a brand spanking new Bearing 72. It's in the water, it is floating, and it is soon to be delivered. But we are here to talk about some burning questions about corrosion. Today we're gonna answer probably the most asked questions that we get on our videos is, how do you protect the hull? We're gonna talk about corrosion. Anti-falling. We're gonna talk about organic growth. We're gonna protecting, talk about- Protecting seawater lines. Zincs and divers and barnacles and algae and electrical currents. This is gonna be very geeky. I hope you're ready. And uh, Alexi has a lot of information that I feel like I understand, but I feel like this is gonna help me to maybe fully understand. You're gonna kind of dumb it down, so I really get it, because it's two different things, right? It's two different things. Okay. Let's talk about galvanic corrosion first. Okay. Because in my opinion, uh, when it comes to the steel boats, a lot of people concern about this. Yeah, how do we protect this rust bucket? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> as you probably aware, the vast majority of commercial boats are steel and of course all the solutions comes from military and commercial side. The vast majority of super yachts and mega yachts are oh, steel. Oh yes, yes of course. And so somehow they're able to protect themselves. Protect, somehow they protect it. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's evolving as well as everything else. The, the corrosion protection is evolving. We all know zincs. They, commonly used on fiberglass, steel boats, aluminum boats. On aluminum boats, uh, it's slightly different zincs than on steel boats, but nevertheless, it's, it's a passive protection. So zincs will melt before the steel, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you have them and, on fiberglass boats other. as well. Yeah, you have because all the ground lines are coming to the zincs on the transom. For the steel boats, basically the hull is a conductor. So you attach things to this boat, they work the same way. You just need to spread them evenly throughout the boat. And it's usually a zinc plan. It's, it's developed by the company which supply this uh, equipment. So they calculate, depends on shape, size of your boat. And of course, separately, we protect rudders, shafts, props, thrusters, because they sort of isolate it from the rest of the boat. So we all know zincs, hate them, know them. Is there something else now, a new technology that exists right now currently that could eliminate most of this zincs that you have to dive and change and... Yes, this technology exists. Let's dive into it. Speaking of zincs... So here we are at the bottom of bearing 65. You, you, you see these spikes? Uh-huh. Uh, zinc plates goes and attach to this uh, spike. So you can see from here, it's one here another here and here here and then they they spread pretty much evenly throughout the boat oh wow it's a lot of zincs uh, i would say probably this boat have about 20 of them not counting the zincs on the on the thrusters yeah. zincs on the shaft zincs on the uh, rudders yeah so it's quite a bit of zincs and if you're in a hot marina you have to and this is a 65 frequency. so now we're gonna go to like 88, is it the same amount of zincs, they're just bigger? No, no, it's, it's more bigger zincs, yeah. on bigger boat it's bigger zincs and more. More zincs. Because they protect certain area and we have a zinc plan which is done by professional... Uh, zinker. Guy, zinker. <laughs> zinker. <laughs> so it's a zinc here protecting the, um, the thruster. So this you would have on a fiberglass construction as well, right? Yes. Where you have the actual thruster shaft being protected. Yes, zincs, shafts, uh, rudders protected pretty much the same way yep. uh, as on fiberglass boats. And fiberglass, instead of like 20 zincs spread out through the hole, they would usually have two zincs on the transom. Yeah, that's what we had too. We had like a plate. Yeah, and then or the, one or two, depends on the size of the boat. And then all our interior, like pumps and, and all the stuff was like connected via, via a cable. To, to that plate. So here, obviously, these are to protect the hole because it's a steel hole. Yeah, they're attached to the hole. We, uh, the wiring is run like uh, similar to fiberglass boat. Mm -hmm. The only chassis of equipment is grounded to the hole itself. Got it. Got so it. we don't need to uh, ground oh, it to the ground wire. We ground it to the metal. hole. 
but the hole cannot be conductor of the ground. Okay. So you cannot bring the ground to the source via the hole. You have to have a separate ground wire, mm -hmm. but if, if your equipment needs to be grounded, you ground it to the hole. Interesting. So some people are going to say, okay, well, there's my advantage of fiberglass versus steel. Well, lots of zincs, lots of work to do this. If I have a fiberglass boat, I don't have to do, I only have to do the, the zincs that, you know, that you guys mentioned, all the, the running. Prop shafts, prop, Yeah, waters. exactly. So if you don't want to have the zincs, what is there available? We have an option, which is very popular option. Uh, we install it on probably 70% of the boats under construction. <laughs> and your boat as well. <laughs> <laughs> Is it actually one of the, uh, the only boat right now in the construction that doesn't have it, right? I think so. This year? Yeah. Okay. The client didn't pick it. Yeah, we're using, uh, we're using active protection. Uh, we're using Katelka brand. This system has one sensor which sends the condition of the water. If you have a current in a hot marina or neighboring boat, it sends it and apply to the several transducers, not as many, just several, apply certain voltage from uh, negative 0.02 to 0.05 to a half a volt from point, 0.2 to a 0.5 volts. Yep. And it's actively protect the hole. And it will notify you if the condition is dangerous for your boat. Uh, the system will notify and say this marina is hot, this water is hot, or you have a ground That's problem, a cool. uh, ground fault. So then your, your DC come to the hole and your hole is start to be a, <laughs> a cathode itself. So uh, this system is, first of all, it's notifying. You can have an interface and have this information on your phone. So you can actively monitor it. And of course, you will be notified of any unfavorable condition for the boat. And the boat is actively protected. And you don't have to change these things as, uh, you know, like... There are no, no yeah. zincs yeah, like there, this. There's no zincs. They, they like a transducer, a transducer, some some of them like long, some yep, of them yep. round discs. And um, full smaller boats, because it's used on the commercial boats. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine. So it's not a new technology? No, it's not a new technology. The new is uh, to use it on such a small boats, like under 24 meters. Mm -hmm. Usually okay. it's never been used, because these boats predominantly fiberglass boats. Yep, yep. So since our boats are all steel hull, we're using this and recommend to use it and it's very safe and you will never have a, a galvanic corrosion issues. I don't know if it's similar or not, but I know this from the shore power application where you have the galvanic isolators, for example, for the shore power. Yeah, but this isolator will not uh, prevent Correct. polluted Waters, waters if if you got the boat with a problem yep. next to you or yep. if the whole marina is faulty yeah and you have a hot marina there's it's not uncommon especially in uh you know cruising areas oh yeah 100 sure. yes. percent i mean i, I mean, we when we lived on our boat we we had a, a at least one hot boat on the dock yeah and, and our things were burning yep. way faster way faster then the, our friends who ha were at the different dock yep. and they didn't have they were like wow you guys are changing your zincs quickly and yeah it was everybody at the dock talked about mm -hmm. it and we were trying to figure out what was the hot boat we kind of had an idea but yeah yeah it makes a big difference of course the monitoring of the galvanic corrosion become a part of uh ship monitoring system yeah yep. so and together with the rest of information about your electricity mm -hmm. battery stage bilge pump stage and you, you so flick this, through that screen as well yeah, yeah like, you, uh, Okay. I'm going to run around with my phone, like just with that, and like, oh, oh electric current over here. Is that <laughs> okay. So when it comes to organic growth, right? That's your algae, your barnacles is what we dive and scrape the boat, all of that. What are some of the issues there? You know, it's uh, to me why these two issues like the, the organic growth and, and uh, anti-falling is going to the same category because you're dealing with underwater parts of the boat. Yeah. So it's all related to your underwater part of the hole. So your barnacles, your, 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 your vegetation grow on, on the hole. Your corrosion goes with the hole or corrosion problems may occur in the hole. And also the seawater lines, they fill with water. They're usually underwater. So we're dealing with underwater part of the boat. That's why it's bring to the same 
subject and we're dealing separately with uh, marine growth in uh, seawater lines. We all know that it could be a big problem if your boat is sits in Florida for two, three months. So is it every boat, doesn't matter, steel or, or yes. fiberglass faces the same issue with same sea chest issue. and sea, Same sea issue with sea, sea chest and seawater lines. It's the same issue and it's a great solution for this. And also we can, like all boats, like this boat, you can see this black uh, yep. bottom paint yep. right here. They all That's have what we the all bottom know. Paint. We know the bottom paint. Doesn't, it's no different steel boat or fiberglass boat. It's all the same paint. It all goes, uh, you know, on the hull and it's all hold pretty much the same. And there is no difference. Like you have to clean fiberglass boat as often as steel boat and vice versa. Yep. So to uh, minimize your expense and your how to say the, to keep the boat super clean there is also a solution for this uh, based on ultrasonic technology it's hmm. all frequencies let's talk about that so what is this anti-fouling protection we all know that all boats have to be protected from the marine veg marine how we call it organic, 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 organic growth organic from mar marine organic uh, i know we kind of made it up i don't know if it's a thing if it's not a thing whatever it's called put in the comments you guys but organic growth is what organic we're thinking growth. Yeah. yes marine, we all, marine growth we all know about anti-folding pain different yep. brands of anti-folding pain they claim they stay for three years, they stay for two, sometimes for a year and a sometimes half. Sometimes it lasts a year and a yeah, half. You yeah. have to scrape, it's yeah. not guarantees, you yeah. have to scrape them. And in Florida, every two weeks. It's, and it's of course, every scrape, you, you're losing some paint and then you have to haul out and, and paint it again. Uh, by the way, we are underneath bearing 75, the naughty, no name bearing, people are calling it no name now. No name bearing 75. So you said there are two things. One There's is two, two separate things, uh, two separate systems. One is for protection of your seawater lines, sea chests, all the piping, all the cooling lines. So all protected with one system. It's also Catelco and it's based on copper ions. So apparently this marine um, organisms. organisms, they don't like the copper ions. Huh. And there are two electrodes and one on each sea chest. Actually, we can see the sea chest. Let's go look. They are. Oh, they're so big. Wow. Yes. Here's your sea chest and, and the system, the electrodes is right here. And all the water intake goes through this uh, pipe. Same on the other side. So all the water stream have this um, copper ions yeah. and your air conditioning lines, your compressors, your uh, all your water cooling system stays clean. Because in three months in Florida or California waters and you have these lines blocked, yeah. you cannot anymore, your, your air conditioning is dropping, dropping and your generators have a hard time to suck. You know, only main engine impellers can still get some water for cooling. With this system, we are free of growth in, uh, in uh, internal. Also, this system can protect uh, uh, the, the cathodic protection for the pipelines. It's very important. All different shapes and sizes for different diameter of pipes, different material of pipes, because we're using copper nickel ferrum. It's the most res corrosion resistant material for, for seawater systems and they have special zincs, which is not zincs, some other material yeah. uh, for protection. But it's in combination with this, with, uh, with this, uh, with this um, iron system. Let's get, out of, let's get out of this. Let's hole. get out of this. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're gnomes. We're just like little gnomes in there. <laughs> so. We're standing like this. Okay. Yeah, and then a separate task yeah. is to protect the entire hole. I mean, we already have uh, the anti-folding paint to begin yeah. with, but... We uh, thought, you guys, we thought it's a Saturday? It's going to be very quiet in here? No, they working they're still working. They're working non-stop every day. Every yeah, day. We, we now some some shops working two shifts. Two shifts. Saturdays, you know, like... Oh, it's a, lot of, a lot of boats go to the water before even hours, so that's... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Okay, no. But we have 15 under construction yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We are underneath bearing 80. 
Yeah, yeah you, you see the bearing 88 rudder. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. Yeah. This is our sea torque shaft. You see the shafts are not exposed. So um, we already talk about corrosion, like the corrosion. We still have zincs here. This is the hole for attaching zincs. We also have zinc protection here uh -huh. on, on the shaft and same on the thrusters. Uh -huh. Coming back to the uh, anti-folding. Yeah. So steel boats are not different to fiberglass boat in this respect. You still have to have anti-folding paint, same brands of paint, same variety, you buy them. Do you prices. know if there's um, more growth or less growth, fiber, fiberglass versus steel? Is there anything that sort of attracts the marine? No, I, I never same. never heard of a different... Me no. either, but that's why I'm no, asking. No, just uh, for, for, marine, uh, for marine organism, it's just a same. surface. So it's a surface, yeah. Yeah, so it's not very desirable surface when it's fresh anti-folding. Yeah. Uh, but they still can form some yeah. colonies on it. And the more you scrub and the more the you more clean, you scrub, and the more the, the, they, they can actually attach Yeah, there. the thinner thinner yeah. you're, you're anti-folding, okay. yeah. the faster you need to hold the boat out. To protect further your boat, we also use a system, same brand, Katelka, uh -huh. and they have a transducer which applies certain frequencies to the boat. Not monotone, they, it's, it comes in sequences. And they uh, make the whole boat resonate. And this frequency apparently very unpleasant for marine vegetation, for, for marine uh, organisms. Hmm. And um, they don't settle that easy on your anti-folding paint. So you can drastically reduce your scrubbing. In some cases, eliminate completely and prolong the life of your anti-folding paint and efficiency of your vessel, fuel saving, and many good things come from this. This is all three systems. We talk about system of protection, the hole, anti-folding hole, anti-folding sea chest and sea, sea water system, and the galvanic protection. So all these three systems are uh, optional and very popular option. We install them on vast majority of the boats under construction. And I we, think- We have all three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. It, they're not expensive. Yeah, they're not. I mean, if you look at the price of the vessel and it, in, in perspective, they're not expensive. It's like a no brainer. You kind of go, okay, I'm going to invest all this money into this asset that I have. I got to protect it. And this is the, you know, it's worth every penny, I think, for Absolutely. and also the, the amount of work. And if you are diving it yourself, you got to do it. It's time, it's effort. It's, if you're paying a diver, all, it all costs money. I feel like it's almost like solar panels in a way in a house. Like you invest into it, but it, it's going to pay off at the end because you're, you know, it lasts. Yeah. It makes it Your last. sea chest protection can be paid off in one event. Like when you have everything clogged, then you have to disassemble your uh, and replace well, what is sometimes. it that you do? You do like a liquid? You, what, is, what do you do if you don't have it? If you don't have you the sea chest protection? You're cleaning it, you're using liquid when it's possible. It's a nightmare. I mean, if you have oh, yeah. your system like to, and to bring And that's regardless it, of what kind of boat you have. It's regardless. On any boat. And not just, uh, um, you know, algae and, and barnacles, also seagrass. Seagrass, seagrass. starts growing in your system. That's so yeah. crazy. Inside And barnacle as well. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and the mussels and yeah, all yeah, this, yeah, yeah. they like it warm, nice, dark. Yeah. And the water circulating there, yeah, still. It's always fresh water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always because fresh water. So it's almost it like attracting them. Yeah, they to have a there. flow of food yeah. coming. It's a nice house. It's Paradise. a nice house. It's a nice Paradise. house. It's hard to get rid of them if you get them. <laughs> yeah, and, makes sense. And uh, same with, with the hole. Imagine like diver, every time you clean this, a big boat, it's, it's a big expense. Every two weeks it's add up. Yep. So all your system will be paid off in a year of usage of the boat. Yep. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to, to, to choose and install them, and we, are, we, we like it. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, thanks for sharing with us. I hope you guys, this was helpful. I know you're asking these questions all the time. If you have any more, put them down in the comments. What other video would you like us to make with Alexei, kind of diving into the subject and having sort of a, 
a, a geeky time talking about it, just let us know in the comments and uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you. Ciao. Bye. Bye.